girl and me know that our love will last forever. My girl and me know that we do belong together. But sometimes it seems I shatter our dreams with some careless word of foolish lies. Me and my girl. Advertiser, I read your advertisement in the Lonely Hearts column, and I'm writing to say, I think you're the girl I'm looking for. <gasps> you say you're fond of eating out, going to the cinema and walking. I will take you to eat out next Saturday. Then we'll go to the cinema, and then we'll walk back to my flat, where I will take you in my arms. <laughs> um, oh dear. Oh dear! Oh no. Dear madam, I am a serious minded person of moral and Scottish background. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I am 38 years old, unmarried, and of tidy appearance. I know we will be good friends because the big green elephant that lives under my bed. <laughs> Dear Miss, I enclose a photograph of myself. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, Derek. Yes, Derek, I will. Yes, I will do that. Yes, as soon as I've got a chance. Hmm? Yes, yes, I am actually very busy. Yes, yes, I'm being rushed off my feet. <laughs> yeah, all right, Derek, I will. Right, we'll see you next week. Bye. Honestly, sometimes that Derek, he's such an old... So I sent him off to organise a conference in one of Britain's internationally famed pleasure resorts, and all he can do is moan. Which internationally famed pleasure resort? Cardiff. <laughs> oh, lucky, Derek. And poor little you, left here in dull old London to struggle on as best you can. I know, Noel. Sometimes I wonder if I can actually stand the strain. And there are lunch times when I wonder if you can stand. <laughs> there we are. You see, second call already, and it's only 11.30. Yes? Yes, Liz? Oh, is it? All right. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Give me two minutes and then wheel him in. My goodness, it's not work. No, but it's close. It's some charity type. Honestly, the man's a flaming nuisance. He runs a home for lunatic kids, you know, sort of, well, hotel for yobbos, I suppose. You call it. <laughs> and he wants me to uh, arrange this fundraising event for him for peanuts. And will you? You're joking. I'll give him ten minutes chat and I shall shunt him off onto some poor, unsuspecting competitor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll shunt him off onto Fergus. <laughs> yes, of course it was Fergus the creep that shunted him off onto me. <laughs> don't forget you're coming around for dinner tonight. Yes, shall I bring a bottle? Good heavens. No, no, don't even think about it. It's spaghetti, so make it red. <laughs> Mr. Brocklebank, Mr. Harrop. Ah, Mr. Brocklebank, uh, delinquent kids, yes? Yes, that's right, Mr. Harrop. Very good of you to see me. Not at all. Do sit down. Uh, Liz, uh, coffee. Oh, sorry, I should introduce you. This is... Uh, Hello. You. Sorry, I can't stay. I must go. Oh dear, it's raining outside. <laughs> uh, tell me, Mr. Bucklebank, does your charity do anything for delinquent middle-aged ladies? <laughs> Thank you, well, that was great. Good. I'm glad you liked it. It was absolutely super. <laughs> yes, Isabel, it's really brill. Please, sir, not brill. Isn't it time you dropped this childish slang and spoke like a grown-up? I'm sorry. OK, Isabel, that was absolutely super. Right, for that you can help clear away. I want a quiet word with Nell. Nell? 
Nell, there's, uh, there's something I want to ask you. You want to know why I put my shopping bag over my head in the office today? <laughs> to ask you if you fancied a brandy, but as you've raised the subject, why did you put the shopping bag over your head in the office this morning? Your man from the charity. I didn't want him to see me. I see. Do you cross the street to avoid flag sellers, too? <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I know him. I met him once for just two hours in 1944. I've never seen him since. And yet I don't believe there's been a day I haven't thought of him. Oh, no, that's really... Absolutely sick-making, mm. I know. Straight out of woman's <laughs> realm. I ought to be ashamed of myself. Oh, no, Granny, it's romantic. Excuse me, you're not supposed to be listening. Oh, let her, Simon. Perhaps she won't make quite such a fool of herself if it ever happens to her. But you just met this man this once. I mean, what can happen to two people in just two hours? Hmm? <laughs> Perhaps I ought to rephrase that. I know. Especially as those two hours were spent in a, a crowded wartime WVS canteen on Kettering Railway Station. Steaming tea urns and sticky buns are not exactly the stuff of romance. Oh, but tell us about it, Gran. Well, I was a young wren. He was Captain Lionel Brocklebank of the something or others. We, we were both waiting for trains. We talked, we drank mugs of bovril, if I remember rightly. They always said there was bromide in the tea. <laughs> Dad, what's bromide? <laughs> it's a wartime substitute for sugar. <laughs> Anyhow, we, uh, we just seemed to click. What happened then, Gran? Did he get killed in the war? Well, if he did, he made a remarkable recovery. <laughs> he walked into your father's office this morning as large as life. No, we, we just lost contact. He said he was going to Catterick, but he may well have been posted somewhere else. I thought I was going to Portsmouth and finished up in Cairo. The war was like that, Sam. People never knowing where they were going to be from one moment to the next. Like travelling by minicamp. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was here today, right there. So why did you... Run away. Mm. Oh, I just couldn't face him, I suppose. It's been 40 years, you know. I'm not exactly a fresh-faced young wren anymore, am I? He remembers me as pretty, because I was. Quite. I just couldn't face seeing him again and hearing him say, I hadn't changed a bit. Right, now, you sure I can't give you a lift? No, thanks, sir. It's OK. I'm going to go with Anne. Listen, can I come to the office after school? Because I've got the afternoon free. Of course you can. I'll see you after lunch. Bye. Bye. Ah, <clears throat> uh, hello. Is Mr Brocklebank there, please? Ah, <laughs> uh, hello. This is personal secretary to Mr. Harrop at Eyecatchers. Yes, you came to see him yesterday. He was wondering, could you possibly come in today at about half past one and talk about it again? Yes, he's changed his mind. <laughs> he's a bit like that. <laughs> so can you come? Oh, that's brill. I mean, that's <laughs> absolutely super. Thank you. Hi, Gran. Hi, it's me. Listen, can you come to the office today at about half past one? Oh, go on, Gran, please. W well, yes, it is important. Well, I don't know. It's something to do with money. With your investment in eye catchers. So, you will come, then? Oh, thanks, Gran. Bye. <laughs> What are you doing here? Uh, well, I pop in now and then to do the odd bit of work. <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to be at lunch. I know. I thought we could have lunch together. My treat. No! I'm sorry? I mean, no, thank you, because I'm looking after the office. Well, where's Liz? Oh, she's at the wine bar with Isabel, fixing up with some guy. Well, when are you going help? Well, me? Be party to some dark conspiracy to enhance another man? No, thank you. <laughs> then why don't you go and have a drink by yourself? No, there's nothing worse than drinking by yourself. Fergus will be there. There is something worse than drinking by <laughs> oh, Go on, 
done, Dad, please. I want the responsibility to show that I can do it. Please. All right, very well. You're in charge. I'm popping out now, Miss Harrop. Bye. <laughs> stepped out for the moment. He asked me if you'd wait in his office. Thank you, young lady. <laughs> one down, one to go. <laughs> Hello, sir. Where's that spendthrift father of yours? He's, um, in there. Right. Right, Simon, what's all this about money? Have you... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I... No! No! <laughs> it is you, isn't it? No, it's someone else. <laughs> it is you. Oh, no. You haven't changed a bit. <laughs> my girl and me. Me and my girl, we got each other. What are you doing here? Look, you keep asking me this. <laughs> Just come back and get the newspaper. If I don't have anything to read, I'll have to talk to Fergus. Why don't you buy a paper? I've already got one. It's through there. Here's one. No, Sam, that's the sun. I won't say it's worse than talking to Fergus, but it runs from a very close second. <laughs> don't go in there, please. Why not? There's somebody in there. Oh, I see. So that's why you want to be left alone in the office. Is it an assignation? Yes. Who is it? Mr. Brocklebank. <laughs> well, I've heard of the age difference, but this is ridiculous. Gran's in there, too. Go on. Well, I rang them both up this morning and said you wanted to see them. Sam, that was totally irresponsible of you. Well, I thought if I could get them alone in a room together, they might find they were in love. You do that with pedigree cats, not people. <laughs> <laughs> Happy. They were very happy being unhappy. Yes, but if it works... It will not work. It'll be a disaster. They'll come out in the minute. Oh, your granny, she'll be embarrassed. He'll be terribly hurt. And they'll both be extremely furious with you. Samantha, I ought to be absolutely furious with you, but... Well... Thank you, young lady. Thank you very much indeed. Simon, you've met Lionel, of course. Yeah, hello, uh, Lionel. <laughs> I'm taking Nell out for a drink. Celebrate our reunion. See you later. <laughs> and if you think that makes everything all right, you're wrong. Now, I've got a better chase than keep an eye on Lionel. After all, we know nothing about him, do we? Dad, he is just a man from a charity. That's right, and that's another thing. What? Thanks to you, Miss Cupid, he'll be a friend of the family for life, and I'll have to do all his rotten charity work. <laughs> His name's Joe, and he's a friend of my boyfriend, Wendell. They're coming round to the office tonight when we finish to take us out. Oh, dear. Well, I knew you'd be pleased, but there's no need to leave up and down. <laughs> I am pleased, Liz, honest, but I was thinking, what's going to happen? We'll sit on our own while they play pool, if I know Wendell. No, I mean afterwards. They might buy us a meal, if they're nagging. But after that? Go down some club, perhaps? And then? Well, there's this all-night pie stall on the embankment. You but know I'm what I sure mean, Liz. I mean, what are we going to do? Oh, you mean what are we going to do? <laughs> That's what I mean. Well, just the usual, I suppose. Hey, but what is the usual? I mean, I know what the usual is where I come from. <laughs> I was thinking, down here, well, the usual might be a bit unusual. <laughs> What is the usual in Glasgow? What do men expect up there? Oh, well, they expect everything. Everything? Everything. Mind you, they get nothing. <laughs> this wine's delicious. No bromide. No. <laughs> My word, that was a long time ago. Forty years. You won't believe this, Nell, but I don't think a day's gone by that I haven't thought of you. Curiously, I do believe it. I did try to find you. In fact, I made so many inquiries about 
Wren movements, the Admiralty were convinced I was a spy. How did you get out of that? I told them I was a sex maniac. <laughs> oh, well. Perhaps I was worth chasing in those days. I was a pretty little thing, if I remember rightly. Nope, you were never pretty. What? You were beautiful. And some things never change. <laughs> oh, Lionel. Well, I was certainly taken with you. Mind you, I was just an impressionable 23-year-old. You told me you were 21. I lied about my age even then. <laughs> 23? So now you must be... I'm 49. <laughs> You're exactly 49. <laughs> so, what happened to you after the war? I married. Nice man. Nice, but tragic. Tragic? At the age of 18, they told him the pubs didn't stay open all day. He never got over the shock. Oh. <laughs> Still, he's long gone now. What about you? Oh, I stayed on in the army till 49, and I've been doing much the same ever since. Mm. The charity? Yes, the charity is a part-time interest. I really do other things. Who? Oh? What other things? Ah, Simon. Ah, Fergus. Well, that wasn't nice. We must have another chat sometime. <laughs> Sly boots. What? I see you've snaffled another biggie. No, it's just a small glass of muscadet, actually. Now, come on, Simon. I know. You can't make a fool out of me. That's true. Somebody got there before me. <laughs> Let me say, here and now, sincerely, thingies, old chap. Thingies? You know, congrats, etc. What a coup. Should have known you'd be the one. Am I? I mean, and should you? Oh, yes. I mean, look at him. Oh, well, Rocklebank. <laughs> Absolutely. Most people would never guess, but you were onto him in a flash. Yes, I was, wasn't I? And you got him. Yeah. Would you like him, Fergus? Ha, 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 No, Fergus, you can take him over. Ha, 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 Perhaps I should have gone on the hall. Don't you, my old chap? I did dare say a quick little chat at with him when he first came in. Hello, Mr. Brockers, I said. Go away, I'm busy, he said. Should have known you'd sewn him up. Clever idea, getting Mrs. Cresset to chat to him. Little bit of the old way, hey, hey, works wonders. No, uh, Fergus. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, Simon, you were simply too quick for me. <laughs> you certainly know which side of your whole meal is spread the low cholesterol margarine, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but I think you all have business. The uh, presentations, the conferences that are going to come your way. Gosh. Yes, gosh. Anyway, I mustn't go babbling on. No, you, you carry on babbling, Fergus. <laughs> no, I mustn't. That's the trouble with the champers. It tends to loosen the old tongue at. Now, I'm going to break a long-standing rule. Really? Yes. I'm going to encourage you to talk to me. Oh, really? <laughs> Gavin, can we have another bottle of champagne, please? You were saying, Fergus. Hey, Liz, your boyfriend, Wendell. Well, I think I met him once. He's the blonde one, isn't he? Nah, he's not the blonde one. Oh, is he then what you'd call a, a dark fella? No, he's not what you call a dark fella. Oh. He's what you call a black fella. <laughs> oh, really? Well, Liz. I'm still here. Well, this friend is bringing for me this jewel. Is he what you'd call a blonde fella? Or is he what you'd call a dark fella? Or could he be a... Well, well that is... Would you, well... I mean, would you say he was a black fella? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. His mum was black and his dad was black, so well, he might be. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, don't tell me you're prejudiced. Oh, I'm not, no, but well, it's different, you know. Oh, no, it's not, you know. <laughs> so at home, they'd say it was terrible. My father went mad when our Ian went out with Amanda. Was she black? No, English. <laughs> Mind you, he was all right when he found out her father was a bookie. <laughs> Joe's not a bookie. Nah, he's a scene shifter. Oh, dear. Liz, I better not. I think you'd better explain it to them. Oh, no, he's your date. You explain. Oh, dear. Hello, girls. Well, I'm glad to see someone's happy. Hello, Sam. Oh, Dad, I'm sorry. What for? Arranging that stupid meeting between Gran and Mr. Brocklebank. No, it wasn't stupid. You said it was. I know I said it wasn't. And now you've got to do his charity work. Yes, I don't really mind. Yes, you do. You said it was rotten. Yes, I know I said it was rotten, but... Oh, uh... you too? Oh, hi, 
telegram. Where's Mr. Brocklebank? Gone back to his office. Oh, no, you should have brought him back here. I wanted to have a little word with him. But, Simon, you said he was a, um, what was it, a flaming nuisance. I wish people would stop remembering what I said. <laughs> so you do his charity work? Yes, well, I mean, it is a good cause. And he's a friend of mine. Well, yeah. And not because, uh, which I'm sure you know as well as I do, he's the managing director of a large cosmetics company with a whole stack of work available to an outfit like eye catchers. Um... Oh, so is that why what I did was a good thing after all? No, 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 look. Oh, dear. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Simon, but you won't be seeing any more of Mr. Brocklebag. And neither shall I. But you two are getting on so well. Yes, I saw you in the wine bar. Everything was going swimmingly. Too swimmingly, perhaps. You see, Mr. Brocklebank isn't alone. There's a Mrs. Brocklebank, so he has a happy marriage. Oh, I never thought of that. We decided if he was going to keep his happy marriage, then it would be wise if we didn't see each other again. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry now. I mean, not about the business. I know, Simon. Thank you. You're right first time, Dad. I should never have done it. I should never fix up that meeting. It was stupid. No, it wasn't, Samantha. All right, it wasn't exactly a, a fairy tale ending, but just for a little while, it was absolutely brill. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly time. Thought what you're going to say to him yet? No, oh dear. Hey, home time, isn't it? Yeah, well, we were going to be taken out for a drink by two <laughs> fellas, but I'm not sure what's going to happen. Hi, Liz. Who are you then? Oh, hi. Oh. Uh, Joe, this is Isabel, Isabel Joe. Hello, it's good to meet you. Isabel has something to say, Joe, don't you, Isabel? Isabel. What? <laughs> don't you have something to say to Joe? Oh, I, I. Well, go on then. Him. Um, you're not a Protestant, are you? <laughs> Me? I'm a Baptist. Oh, well, that's all right then. Come on. Where are we going? <laughs> Do you know now, I think Isabel could do with a drop of bromide in her tea. <laughs> You're right. What are you talking about, Dad? Isabel doesn't even take sugar. <laughs> I enclose a photograph of myself. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, Derek. Yes, Derek, I will. Yes, I will do that. Yes, as soon as I've got a chance. Hmm? Yes, yes, I am actually very busy. Yes, yes, I'm being rushed off my feet. <laughs> yeah, all right, Derek, I will. Right, we'll see you next week. Bye. Right. Honestly, sometimes that Derek, he's such an old... I sent him off to organise a conference in one of Britain's internationally famed pleasure resorts and all he can do is moan. Which internationally famed pleasure resort? Cardiff. <laughs> oh, lucky Derek. And poor little you left here in dull old London to struggle on as best you can. I know, Nell. Sometimes I wonder if I can actually stand the strain. And there are lunch times when I wonder if you can stand. <laughs> there we are. You see a second call already and it's only 11.30. Yes? Yes, Liz? Oh, is it? All right. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Give me two minutes and then wheel him in. My goodness, not work. No, but it's close. It's some charity type. Honestly, the man's a flaming nuisance. He runs a home for lunatic kids, you know, sort of, well, hotel for yobbos. Who I suppose you call it. <laughs> and he wants me to uh, arrange this fundraising event for him for peanuts. And will you? You're joking. 
I'll give him ten minutes chat and I shall shunt him off onto some poor, unsuspecting competitor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll shunt him off onto Fergus. <laughs> yes, of course it was Fergus the creep that shunted him off onto me. <laughs> don't forget you're coming round for dinner tonight. Yes, shall I bring a bottle? Good heavens. No, no, don't even think about it. It's spaghetti, so make it red. <laughs> Mr. Brocklebank, Mr. Harrop. Ah. Mr. Brocklebank, uh, delinquent kids, yes? Yes, that's right, Mr. Harrop. Very good of you to see me. Not at all. Do sit down. Uh, Liz, uh, coffee. Oh, sorry, I should introduce you. This is... Uh... Hello. How nice to meet you. Sorry I can't stay. I must go. Oh, dear, it's raining outside. <laughs> Uh, tell me, Mr. Brocklebank, does your charity do anything for delinquent... He said he was going to Catterick, but he may well have been posted somewhere else. I thought I was going to Portsmouth and finished up in Cairo. The war was like that, Sam. People never knowing where they were going to be from one moment to the next. Like travelling by minicamp. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was here today, right there. So why did you... Run away? Mm. Oh, I just couldn't face him, I suppose. It's been 40 years, you know. I'm not exactly a fresh-faced young wren anymore, am I? He remembers me as pretty, because I was. Quite. I just couldn't face seeing him again and hearing him say, I hadn't changed a bit. Right, now, you sure I can't give you a lift? No, thanks, sir. It's OK. I'm going to go with Anne. Listen, can I come to the office after school? Because I've got the afternoon free. Of course you can. I'll see you after lunch. Bye. Bye. Oh, <clears throat> uh, hello. Is Mr. Brocklebank there, please? <laughs> oh, hello. This is personal secretary to Mr. Harrop at Eyecatchers. Yes, you came to see him yesterday. He was wondering, could you possibly come in today at about half past one and talk about it again? Yes, he's changed his mind. <laughs> he's a bit like that. <laughs> so can you come? Oh, that's brill. I mean, that's <laughs> absolutely super. Thank you. Hi, Gran. Hi, it's me. Listen, can you come to the office today at about half past one? Oh, go on, Gran, please. W well, yes, it is important. Well, I don't know. It's something to do with money. With your investment in eye catchers. So, you will come, then? Oh, thanks, Gran. Bye. <laughs> My girl and me know that our love will last forever My girl and me know that we do belong together But sometimes it seems I shatter our dreams With some careless word of foolish lies Me and my girl Got each other, whatever life may send us. Me and my girl, we've got each other, however life may bend us. Sure, we'll see tears fall. Love never was all rainbows, but they'll always be. Dear advertiser, I read your advertisement in the Lonely Hearts column and I'm writing to say, I think you're the girl I'm looking for. <gasps> you say you're fond of eating out, going to the cinema and walking. I will take you to eat out next Saturday. Then we'll go to the cinema and then we'll walk back to my flat where I will take you in my arms. <laughs> um, oh dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no.
Dear Madam, I am a serious-minded person of moral and Scottish background. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I am 38 years old, unmarried and of tidy appearance. I know we will be good friends because the big green elephant that lives under my bed <laughs> Dad, what are you doing here? Uh, well, I pop in now and then to do the odd bit of work. <laughs> We're supposed to be at lunch. I know, I thought we could have lunch together. My treat. No! I'm sorry? I mean, no thank you, because I'm looking after the office. Well, where's Liz? Oh, she's at the wine bar with Isabel, fixing up with some guy. Well, when are you going to help? What, me? Be party to some dark conspiracy to enhance another man? No, thank you. <laughs> then why don't you go and have a drink by yourself? No, there's nothing worse than drinking by yourself. Fergus will be there. There is something worse than drinking by yourself. <laughs> oh, go on, Dad, please. I want the responsibility to show that I can do it. Please. All right, very well. You're in charge. I'm popping out now, Miss Harrop. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Oh, good morning. Mr. Brocklebank? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Hack's just stepped out for the moment. He asked me if you'd wait in his office. Thank you, young lady. <laughs> one down, one to go. <laughs> Hello, sir. Where's that spendthrift father of yours? He's, um, in there. Right. Right, Simon, what's all this about money? Have you... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I... No! No! <laughs> it is you, isn't it? No, it's someone else. <laughs> it is you. Oh, no. You haven't changed a bit. middle-aged lady. <laughs> well, that was great. Good. I'm glad you liked it. It was absolutely super. <laughs> yes, Isabel, it was really brill. Please, sir, not brill. Isn't it time you dropped this childish slang and spoke like a grown-up? I'm sorry. Okay, Isabel, that was absolutely super. Right, for that you can help clear away. I want a quiet word with Nell. Nell? Nell, there's, uh, there's something I want to ask you. You want to know why I put my shopping bag over my head in the office today? <laughs> to ask if you fancied a brandy, but as you've raised the subject, why did you put the shopping bag over your head in the office this morning? Your man from the charity. I didn't want him to see me. I see. Do you cross the street to avoid flag sellers, too? <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I know him. I met him once for just two hours in 1944. I've never seen him since. Yet I don't believe there's been a day I haven't thought of him. Oh, no, that's really... Absolutely sick-making, I know. Straight out of the <laughs> realm. I ought to be ashamed of myself. Oh, no, Granny, it's romantic. Excuse me, you're not supposed to be listening. Oh, let her, Simon. Perhaps she won't make quite such a fool of herself if it ever happens to her. But you just met this man this once. I mean, what can happen to two people in just two hours? Hmm? <laughs> Perhaps I ought to rephrase that. I know. Especially as those two hours were spent in a, a crowded wartime WVS canteen on Kettering Railway Station. Steaming tea urns and sticky buns are not exactly the stuff of romance. Oh, but tell us about it, Gran. Well, I was a young wren. He was Captain Lionel Brocklebank of the something or others. We, we were both waiting for trains. We talked. We drank mugs of bovril, if I remember rightly. They always said there was bromide in the tea. <laughs> Dad, what's bromide? It's a wartime substitute for sugar. <laughs> Anyhow, we, uh, we just seemed to click. What happened then, Gran? Did he get killed in the war? Well, if he did, he made a remarkable recovery. <laughs> he walked into your father's office this morning as large as life. No, we, 
We just lost contact.